the owner and the head brewer. Also owner. Also owner. Also owner. So we lucked out today. So, we tried to find this place, I was a little lost because I'm looking for world's famous brewery. But that's not the sign out front. It's um, Palette Pub, right? Yeah, Palette Pub, uh, E Cycles, Daytona, as well as Hop Cycles because we have a lot of other businesses that, that go on. So let's go over some of that. Sure, it's, it's what you want. All right, so we'll, we'll start with Hop Cycles. So Hop Cycles is a traditional 15 passenger pal, uh, uh, like cruise around town, bar hop, you know, drink BYOB. You see them, which is great for the board walk. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, right? And so you, you cruise around, you, you do that. Um, it's, uh, again, BYOB, so beer, wine, booze, all that stuff's okay. Um, and uh, we go to a lot of local spots. We teach them about history on top of that. So um, we'll go to like the Streamline Hotel as an example. Streamline Hotel is where NASCAR was physically founded. And so they signed the founding documents there and did their whole thing. So we go over that. And they get specials on drinks if they go inside and do different things like that. We'll talk about some ghost things and, and, and different style things. Then we have our e-cycles, which are electric bike rentals. Uh, those are pretty popular nowadays. You see them all over. You're, you're probably more familiar with the kick scooters that do that. We don't do the kick scooters here. We do uh, real bicycles that have electric capability. They travel up to 20 miles an hour uh, with uh, a pedal assist. So you're still pedaling, you're still having some exercise, you're still having control of the bike. It's not a scooter, so it's not going without power. And then we have pallet classes, so we can't see them, but we've got some pallets here on the wall. You can come in and do pallet paint classes or an art studio. That's what we originally started as before we were brewery. Um, none of the things that I've just mentioned were allowed on our street. All of them were completely admonished locally. Um, we are the only Daytona Beach brewery. Uh, yeah, outside of, of, of conglomerate places, I, I guess I have to put a caveat on that, because there are uh, Rock Bottom Brewery, which is a great place to go and hang out, but they're not a local, small, mom and pop type deal. And then there's also PJ's Brew House, which again, huge company, you know, ale house style company. Um, we're literally the only local Daytona Beach Brewing Company at all. We're the only one that exists. Yeah. So, uh, how long is the world's most famous beach? Where did that come from? We're at the world's most famous beach. Yeah, so, so we've got a world's man. Yeah, so we've got three of us, and, and we all kind of joked about it. Um, and the original thing was is that it didn't make any sense. Like a couple of us, we, we all got in. I go, literally, we're called the world's most famous beach. That's what Daytona Beach is. That's what it's known for. Why call it the world's most famous brewery? Well, we can capitalize, we, we can capitalize on a slogan that's been used for a hundred years, and it's, it's been that way. Uh, and I'm talking. We, we really got the best beer around. Well, we did. We, we do a name. No, those are, yeah, they're just some. Um, I'm drinking Tom. here. Um, that's Tom. We're Tom. This so if you guys are confused, just remember Tom. Everything's fine. I'm Tom. He's Tom. Uh, I'm no hair Tom. He's lots of hair Tom. Totally different. I'm also short Tom, and he's tall Tom. Oh. Right, so uh, what got you to the beer? Um, I started brewing ten years ago. I brewed at home. And it was one of those, my buddy brought a kid up here over and like, let's bring here. And that one turned out really well, which does always happen. If, if it didn't turn out well, I don't know if I'd still be brewing here. Uh, but after that one, I got excited and I bought everything to start brewing here on my own. I switched from buying the box that had all the ingredients to make these recipes. Escalating from there. I always think it's like a mad scientist game. You, know? you don't know what it is. And, 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 and sometimes getting the sauce is still drinkable. So yeah. I mean, it's like a, it's a trial of um, in, in 10 years, I have dumped two batches of beer. Wow. I, I, I refused to drink two batches of beer that I made, and that was both here in the first two years. Uh, I haven't dumped beer. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. 
So uh, how many beers do you try to have on a We have eight taps, and the, the goal is to have eight taps. Uh, the problem is with a one-barrel system, it goes pretty quick. So brewing as often as I can to get back up to I, it, it, it. To Tom, to test to Tom, he works at him and, him and his cellar wench. That's what, what Tiff is. So the cellar wench, he, he, and, he and her, they bust their butts brewing beer. They, what they do is, is, is their craft is fantastic. And, and that's that's why we all gravitate kind of towards the same thing because I've never brewed beer. I, I didn't know it. Drank a lot of it, obviously. I think the that's, first step. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the first step to a brewer is drinking. You so, <laughs> that's true. So, uh, I, I think I think what they've done is is, is pretty remarkable. Look at uh, the process in which they've created. And, uh, you, you go from the what you got, the half barrel system, or not even. I, I was I started brewing five gallons at a time uh, when I was living in Pennsylvania. Uh, when I moved down here, the wife was drinking a lot, so I upgraded to ten gallons at a time. Uh, and now we're at uh, thirty-one gallons. At and, and so, as a as a brewery, our hardest issue, going back to before, our hardest issue is keeping up with demand. So, we at 30, 31 to thirty-three gallons, roughly, the demand spill off. And what happens? We are having a difficult time keeping up. One of the beers we're brewing, I don't know if it's this tank or that tank, Dorian Gray. So, so Dorian Gray is our IPA. It's a six percent Australian IPA. It's absolutely great. So I don't like the name. Right. Well, it, it's a little different than that too. It's it's got multiple layers. It's also a Hurricane Dorian. So it's a little it's a little extra into it. So we'll we'll have logos and things like that that will come on. But that beer, we brewed it for the first time on this system. We tried it way back when at at, at his home brewing. Uh, but this is the first time that we brewed it on this system a month and a half ago, and it sold out in 25 days. So we, we brewed 31 gallons, 25 days, and we don't do growlers, we don't do growlers. They're in-house, barreling through it, drinking, drinking, drinking. And Tom and I, and staff especially, we have this kind of weird psyche where we don't literally drink our own beer. We try our best to drink. Right now. Well, yeah, right now we are drinking our own That's beer. That's the rule. We're, we're, so, so Tom and I are drinking Fruity Booty. Fruity Booty. You're also drinking yes. Fruity Booty? So Fruity Booty, Booty is our pebble cream ale. And it's a 20% uh, of the mash. is 20% yeah. is of the fermentables is uh, free pebble cereal. Um, yeah, it's actually Dino Bites. Um, because I can buy that. Give it away trades. Right, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, edit! Okay, okay. I mean, he's still dying. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's still that was yeah. Um, yeah. So he, he talked about the time bites and how how twenty percent of the the medicals are that, and it literally is like what's left over in in the bowl, yeah. minus the milk. There's literal no lactose in it. So uh, yeah, here's the fruity application. It's really, really smooth. Good. So it's gonna be hot as hell outside. Yeah. Right. So uh, this is the first one I've reported since COVID. Let's oh. talk about that. How did that kind of affect you? Uh, during COVID, while we were closed, I brewed as much as possible. Oh, yeah, just I, I was here. Nobody else was here, and I was brewing as frequently as I could just to get ready for when we opened because you know. Everybody wants to go to a bar as well as they can. And yeah. Tom sneakily left the door open on occasion. People would walk in. Happenstance, are you guys open? No, we're not open, but would you like a beer? Right. And here you go. So occasionally that would, would happen. It, it might have happened. Yeah, my, once or twice. Not many more times than that. People need it. It I never so happened. Right now. You were so stressed and everything about this stuff. So glad. I think we're cool. Getting over the I, yeah, I think we are. It's one of the other things that Tom didn't mention is everybody has this thing about Florida that we've just been wide open, full throttle the whole way. We were closed for over six months. We closed two days after Mike Week in March. 
So we were closed from March until September, not allowed to open at all. So we were absolutely closed. And everybody up north and up out west thinks that Florida was just this party central because folks from the northeast and from out west. Yeah, the too, like, well, but people from the north. Like, I love that. Powers said fuck on TV. Yeah. Like, all of the fucking guidelines. So, right. And it was pretty outstanding. So I think those people that would travel here would give us the bad. What's that? Oh, that's mine. That's for earlier. Just delivering. Yeah, so you know this is Tiffany. So this is the seller website. So I don't know if she can get in there, but you gotta get in there. Alright. She's working. She's working. Yeah. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, dear. I did not say here for the record. Right here, my love. Girl. Thank you. So is there anything? So when that was happening, actually, before we jumped in, were the other businesses in the this entire street was dead. So, so there was nobody, anybody that was from out of town, any spring breakers, anything, any tourist attractions. Everything in this place was devastating. So we were, I, I would say this core district was hit extremely hard. More hard than uh, a hotel uh, would be hit because the hotel has its intrinsic facilities that can fund you know, uh, uh, everything that goes on. They have their own restaurants. They have their own bars. They're under different regulations. They can do pretty much anything they want because they're allowed to stay open. We were not. And, and so we had to be closed. So while they have, the hotel's restaurants are open, the hotel's bars are open, the hotel's maid services are open, all of those different things that were happening, those guests were not really they were allowed to leave, but why to leave? Because there was nothing going on. You know, if, if you can't leave, if you leave your hotel and everything shut, the lights are off. What's the point? So, so I, I think it was a big, big wake up. It, it's so, it was so awesome back in September to have the governor uh, launch us into the, the, the phase plan that he did and just say, "We're over this. We've done it. We've tried it. 15 days to slow the curve is now." Seven months to slow the curve, we're over it, let's move on. You know what about No, I don't prefer hearing about this. Doesn't even mean that's what they call it's never coming here. Then it came here. Like, okay, well, it's never going to come to West Virginia. Then it comes to West Virginia. We were the last state. Still, still, still came here. Like, man, since this happened out of nowhere. You know, just walking around today, seeing everyone on the beach, everyone out and about, like, everyone seems happy. And I think that's that's the good part. I'm glad you guys are here. Dude, I'll say this. Yeah, people are great here. I, I grew up in Florida. I, I, I used to travel all over the U.S. I've never seen more happy people in a state than in Florida. It doesn't matter where you go in Florida. Anybody that comes from another state when you come to Florida, they're happy. I, I think the governor says the other day, he goes, he goes, literally, this is where people come to be happy. There was a, it wasn't the governor, it was a sheriff. It was some, some top sheriff in the, the state. He goes, it's important that Florida protects its citizens. It's more important than meeting, meeting the state citizens. It's more important that they protect all of the visitors that come here because we have more visitors that come here than just about any other state. So I think when people come here, they have a sense of protection, a sense of you know, self, a sense of just you know, we can enjoy ourselves and not have to worry about the shenanigans that we came from. Because Florida is, for all intents and purposes, the most magical place on earth. I mean, we, we have Disney, we have, we have uh, the world's most famous beach, we have Miami where all the clubs are, you know, Will, yeah, Universal, Will Smith, all, all that good stuff. Yeah, Tiger Woods running his car into places, but anyway, golf. Awesome. <laughs> so is there anything that uh, you guys were talking about the video over before we get into trying the other video? I think we need to talk about the brewery. So um, as a brewery, we have a one barrel system right now. One barrel system, as, as Tom stated, is, is kind of small. We only do about 31 gallons per brew. We've got this huge floor drain right here. <laughs> And then we've got this massive uh, plumbing system that we added and this electrical system that we added. Uh, all of this stuff will disappear here shortly. And we're going to be adding a five barrel system. And it's going to sit here. So this is 34 feet 
34 feet is our, our essentially the new glycol chillers, all of the things that we need to fit a five barrel system right here. Uh, so we'll start producing that once we get it. So we're excited to have that. We're working through the process to get the right dialed in system. Uh, currently, FPL doesn't allow a lot for a phase three system. So the difficulty is, is dealing with electric. Uh, and there's, there's no other way to do that or that currently. Uh, if, if you go to a phase one system, then you have to have some major, major units to, to handle the electrical volume. So we're, we're looking into that so we don't have to continue the upgrade. But that's going to be the next big step. Eventually, you can to keep the in for No, we want to do it all. We, we actually, at some point, will want to distribute. Uh, Tom, he, he's a little modest. Uh, he's got 90 plus residents. And I, I'd like to call Tom the uh, ACDC of beers. So, so uh, it's a funny, funny thing to hear. But when you hear ACDC song, it doesn't matter what ACDC song you hear. You know it's ACDC within the first three riffs. See you guys. Within within the first three riffs, you know it's an ACDC song. And that's how I feel about Tom Beers. They all taste completely different, but they have the same profile. They're extremely smooth, they're awesome to drink, and, and so it's really easy to understand those beers are his. So I, I think that that's something that's going to set us apart in the industry. Can you come up with the names too? Uh, the wife helps with the names more yeah. often than not. She's definitely more creative than us. Yes. Um, a few of them I have come up with, uh, I'd say 80% the wife helps. I like it, how you label this. Uh, the woodworking thing, you have to put you know, Yeah, and, you know, we, we, did, we did a little survey uh, on our Facebook page to see what we should name them because we're by the beach and we wanted to name our fermenter something piratey because yeah. why not? So, Jolly and Hook. Like jo Jolly and Hook and, and oh, Smee yeah. and Roger. Nice. Well, I love this, so uh, let's go try their other one. So let's walk us through this. We're... All right, so um, we're going to start with, uh, on your right side, closest to the sticker, this is My Light Buddy. My Light Buddy. Uh, it's a Kolsch, uh, five it's and a quarter percent. Basic light beer. For those people that say, I don't like craft beer, this is the screw you try this beer. <laughs> I always like that. I think every brewery has to have that one. Just like, we'll just try this. You use one, you want one. Yep. Uh, this one right away, great smell, really easy going. I see this would be a good one to pull off. So I, I see this is a good one to get people in the door. My my favorite thing about it is is so I, I'm not like a, a hobby guy. I, I don't. I'm not a big hop fan. Uh, our other partner who's not here, her and her husband, uh, are major hop fans. They they love as as much hops you can make it. Like sociopath hops, like like if you could have so much bitter in there, you, you might as well bring the Manson family bus. So so yeah, it's super super hoppy. But uh, I like uh, again it, all these beers, this profile that you have, they're they're very even, they're very nice to drink. So my again, house, if I if I didn't have to have my light buddy, or I, I would drink free food all day long. It's funny like. Cereal thing too. I get like a shredded meat aftertaste. <laughs> yeah, the the, uh, the grain that I use, I I took uh, Bud Light and I made it better. Uh, Bud Light's four point two percent. This is five and a quarter. I don't use any rice in it, so. Maybe we can do higher quality ones. Can we do rice with side? We we could. We haven't talked about that. Uh, so number two is Fruity Booty. This is what we used last year. It drinking. is the Pebbles Cream Ale. Right away, it's got a fruit like odor to it, and again, it's just so smooth. We are talking. It's kind of like drinking the bowl after your cereal without the milk. So you get that fruity kind of foamy. 
It's like it's lactose free. Yeah, it's like, no, but funky. I mean, it's a beer, so I mean, yeah. yeah. It tastes but, like it tastes like the milk after the cereal. Yes. Yeah. Great name, great beer. This is probably is this your most popular? Uh, it, it's one of them, definitely. I, I don't see why. This is uh, one I feel like you know, great for both gender. Like this is a like this is a, uh, beer, oh wait. Our, our, our very first beer festival where we were pouring beer and giving it away just to try and get the name out. I had this beer. And about a month later, I walk in a Home Depot, randomly, just grab some stuff, and somebody in an RJ but looks at me and says, You're the Fruity Pebbles beer guy. Yeah, I am. That's really weird. Um, so, everybody knows me for pretty much. And before, before that, one kind of origin story, which is fun. If, if the origin story is different depending on who you talk to. Because there was alcohol involved. Yeah, right. Either way. So, uh, I met Tom and Tiff, his wife, at Top Bottom Distillery. Top Bottom Distillery, uh, I don't know if your show extends beyond breweries. But they make their own booze just across the bridge. They make, they make rum and vodka. Absolutely delectable. It's, it's some of the best I've around. Well, they did a, 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 brew, a, a, a brew show at their car wash. They have a car wash just outside there. And they did that. It's freaking amazing. So they used all the bays of car wash as places that everybody set up the tents. And so I bumped into him and his wife. We've not ever met. I, I bumped into them, and uh, he's got a backpack, and they're rolling around, they're one wheels, all trying to act cool and stuff, and I'm, I'm here just sloshing around. And uh, Vinny, the, the guy from our local distributor, SR Broad, says, hey, Tom, you've got to meet this other guy, Tom. He makes beer at his house in the bathtub. He didn't say that. I, I added it. He brought but, it. Uh, <laughs> so he makes beer as hell. And, and uh, you gotta you gotta come check it out. I'm like, all right, let's go. So Vinny brings me around the corner, and there's Tom and Tiff, super bubbly people. They're nice, happy, whatever. You know, it, it, sun hasn't gotten down. Sun goes down, no longer bubbly. They're very tired. They they wake up at like three o'clock in the morning. You know, and they're, they're super early risers. Yeah. Two, 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 two. So uh, he has fruity booty. That's the, the crux of the conversation where they're, they're going with this. So he has Fruity Booty in his backpack. He pulls out a thermos, undoes it, pours it in, goes, you gotta try this. I'm like, this is freaking fantastic. Fast forward to about a year and a half later, me and my other partner open this bar, and he becomes a regular with his wife, and then he befriends my partner, they start going, my partner starts going to his house, they try some of his beer and they go, we need to get this guy's beer in there. I'm like, hey, this is bar all the time, let's do it. And so that's kind of how this all started. Yeah, like local a local, beer, local alcoholic up. becomes partner. Right, yeah, exactly, yeah, it's very nice. You can't get a better love story. Yeah, it's a really good love story. It's a cheers, buddy. Let's, yes, let's yes. slosh it out. That's a nice one. I think this is a, you can drink all day here, too. It, it's 6%. We'll sneak up on you. At 6%, you will, yeah, clock. So, moving on. Moving on is Chew Bacon Me Crazy. Uh, a maple bacon smoked Irish red. You gotta give it a sniff. You gotta give it a sniff first. Uh, so, the first beer festival that Tiff and I ever poured at, we found out after the fact was a for profit event for a distribution company. But we were the only homebrewers there. Uh, we were invited there. And uh, we were the only brewers to have a bacon flavored beer at a bacon festival. Which seemed weird because a homebrewer has a bacon beer, professional brewers don't. Um, and everybody loved the bacon beer. So, um, I use real bacon in it, so it's not vegan friendly. Uh, it is only 4%, so it's day driven friendly. 
get the maple taste in there too, like that. Yeah. And, it, and all it's, uh, I use a smoked malt, so it's very smoky. It's something that, when I say it's a maple bacon smoked Irish bread, most people don't understand how smoky it's going to be. I love it. Yeah. yeah. To me, this is like what you would drink while fucking grilling. Yes. Nice day, you know? Without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. No, this this beer in itself, uh, it's all about grilling. It's all about hanging out. Uh, I'm making a fucking candle. Let's just make this yeah. candle. Yeah. Dude, I, I, I just smell it all day. All day, all, all the time. It, it, it literally is a breakfast in a glass kind of a, it's so rich. Like, I, 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 I say this all the time. And for only a 4%, the body that this beer has, and the taste that, that this beer evokes, is really huge. I mean, I I, I think it's phenomenal. I mean, you, you can't find a 4% beer that's gonna kind of evoke those smells. Yeah. Like a 4% beer is always super mild. And super mild. You get all of you get the yeah. you get the bacon, you get the maple, and love it. And then you definitely know it's red. Yeah. Definitely everything about it, you know it's red. Bring it up in Close there. up. Yeah, look at that. What had happened? If you can't tell it's a red, it definitely is sure it's on taste. Who would make one bake? Oh man, I love that. So his wife made a version of this. Uh, she snuck a recipe in there while he was sleeping. Is, is what I'd like to say. So she, we call it Brekkie. B-R-E-K-K-I-E. Brekkie. Which is the Australian term for Brekkie. And it's a Brekkie, it's a Brekkie stout? Uh, porter. Por Brekkie porter. Bacon porter. Yeah. Bacon porter. Yeah. Bacon porter. Yeah. Bacon porter. Yeah. Dude, it's, yeah. it's all the deal. So it's, all it's, deal. it's an oatmeal porter with black toast. So it is a really breakfast Filled, yeah, all of it. It's so good. There's no smoke in it, but it's a lactose porter, lots of oatmeal in it. When did you do that in November? Uh, yeah. November. So that was November when we had that one. And it's 10 gallons and 36 hours. Wow. It, it was you know, so any time, any time we grew a beer that I've never brewed at home before, we would always general do a small bag. Yeah. So instead of one barrel, we can take out. Just in case, it doesn't take out yeah. awesome. I, I'll drink it at home. Yeah. Uh, but that one, everybody loved, and it's it's within the next five years coming back. Yeah. As, as a full barrel, because it went so good. So this one tastes like three, and I think you only have three. I, I hate that I only have we, three. We see these over here and I'm like, man, like, I want to try this IPA, I want to try all this. And I'm like, fuck, this quarter sounds good. But, uh. So uh, the last one here is a shout out, right? So this one's done. The, the last one's a shout out. I do not read the last one. So I, I'll, I'll take it because Tom, he, he... I didn't make it. <laughs> he didn't make it, but he drinks it. I do. So this is a Narragansett. Not a lot of folks know about Narragansett. So Narragansett started in 1890. So it's a it's a nice easy lager from Rhode Island, as, as weird as that is. It, it's super easy to drink. It actually is a little floral, right? I mean, it's got a got a little of that. Um, and it's it's such an inexpensive beer, and it's got such a high alcohol content. I think it's a five two. So so you can really enjoy yourself on a Narragansett. And at the same time, most places only serve it draft if they have it. So we have it on draft literally because it's just an easy drinking, inexpensive beer that if you want to enjoy yourself, this is it. This is nice. Actually, like all beers are cheap drinking beer. Another one says it's a hot thing. None of these are over hot. A lot of places we go into, a lot of people like shove hot. Punch you, yeah, right? Shove hot down your drink. Which, I mean, if you got that, like, we only make IPA and then you can get it. But if you don't want that every day, I think I know you're not. Right? Yeah. So I, I wish I had that every day. I don't want that every day. Yeah. 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 Negative hop guy. I, I don't mind hop. Give me a little hop yeah. if I'm drinking a hoppy beer. Yeah. But if I walk into your bar and I, I have 
give me a lager. And it tastes like I'm drinking a, a 96 IBU pine tree beer. Like, I'm like, what am I doing here? And they go, oh, you don't like my beer, bro? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like oh, don't. This is not what this is. You're like, it's a, it's a easy, I'd be able to make that people are going to make them over. I'm like, oh, I'll take this. And they just they just change they are not like this. Each of these taste different. And with this one, like it's not even hard to you know, even describe taste wise. It is really beautiful. That beer is so easy to drink, and there's no flavor to it as well. Yeah, I can't even tell you what it tastes like. It's good. It tastes like, like, like beer. Yeah. It's but good beer. Just beer. It's literally. And this, they said this is really cheap to have. It doesn't taste like cheap beer though. You don't have that like really skunky like. You know. So that is so. So the problem with today's beers is they don't really have a regular lager anymore, other than Budweiser, right? Budweiser's your scale, and there is no other thing on the scale. All you have is Budweiser. But people forget. You have course banquet. You have Miller uh, Champagne beer, you know, and, and you have Nevergansett. So you have other beers that are available, but people don't drink them because because they go for they go for what's advertised, right? Yeah. So Nevergansett's a non-advertised beer. I would say the two best beers that you can buy that are that are lager style beers are Nevergansett and PBR. Those are the easiest drinking beers you'll ever drink. PBR is a little rough in a can, but if you pour it into a glass, it smooths it right out. But if it's a draft, but if it's a draft PBR, you've never had a better beer that's that style of beer. For that inexpensive, yeah. We'll see. It's funny that people always go through like the longer. Uh, but why? But why? I'm saying it's my favorite beer. Yeah, like, without a doubt. Man, I love this. So, uh, anything coming up that we can uh, throw out? Coming out? Uh, Dorian Gray is going to be coming up in about a week and a half. And whose garden is it anyway? A Belgian wit. So, so whose garden? So we tried that the first time. That was the first time you heard it, right? Uh, For us. Yeah. yeah. So. So uh, he brewed Who's Garden for us about three months ago, and it sold so fast, we didn't understand why it sold so fast, other than that it's just delicious. I mean, it, it's just everybody would come in and they'd go, hey, do you have something like Blue Moon? Yeah, this is it. Do you have something that's uh, a little tart? Yeah, this is it. Do you have something that's light? This is it. It, it literally hits all the normal flavor profiles that most people look for when they're not looking for a stout. You know, it's just super easy to drink. And who's dark? It is, it, it, how is it spelled, Tom? Uh, G-A-A. -A, a little extra. Because uh, I took the idea from Hogar, which is a Belgian with that not a lot of people know about. And, and whose line is it anyway? Because that's an epic oh, show. Yeah. Uh, and I just blended it in again. Yeah. That was one of the few that I came up with, but not the one. So the 40 percent. Yeah, yeah. Where the, where, where the facts are made up, the points don't matter? That. That. Right. But the British version, I'll just tell you that. What is it? That was a new version. Oh, I haven't yeah. even seen How it. Old it how old is Drew Perry looking, by the way? Have you seen him on Price is Right? Yeah. Dude, the guy's got like a 92-year-old beard. I, 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 I think he did the Mark Marker. No, Bob Marker, he did the beard. Like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like Bob Marker. I, I, I think he's got a, a nose problem. Dude, you haven't seen him. He is old looking. He, is. he looks like 196. <laughs> Such a half, like half of one. More than half of one. Yeah. yeah, I don't have paper. Oh, I, I don't either, but I just saw it the other day once. But well, the best one is, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yes. wait, wait, is on. Let's make a deal. That's solid. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Well, yeah. I love it. You're going to be good. Good afternoon. I'm going to go over I can't wait to see what's the person. Guys, if you're in Florida, come to the most famous beach. 
The world's most famous brewery. Yes, at the world's most famous brewery. And it is named that for a reason. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Cheers, thank you. Alright, guys. Awesome.